Hello everyone, happy Tuesday. It's time for day one of my Countdown to Celebration 2022 um, video series. So I'm gonna be live every day for the next seven days, counting today, um, counting down and featuring products from the upcoming Celebration promotion, which starts Tuesday, January 3rd. Now, 3rd, 4th. January 4th. <laughs> Got my days mixed up. When I'm on vacation, honestly, I am so far out of the loop. It's crazy. Anyhow, this is Lena Gursa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And today we are all about the fantastic Awesome Otters stamp set, which is one of the um, available choices for free during Celebration 2022. Now, this promotion um, in Canada, with every $60 that you spend, retail amount, you get to choose a free item from the Celebration brochure. Now, this promotion has been going on forever, honestly, like as long as I've been a demonstrator, and I've been a demonstrator for 11 and a half years. Um, it's an awesome promotion. Everybody loves Celebration. Now, last year, Stampin' Up! offered two Celebrations. We had one January and February, and another um, August... September, I think. Yes. Um, so there will be another celebration coming up this summer with totally different products, but these ones are so adorable and I can't wait to share some cute, cute projects that I made with the Awesome Otter stamp set. Now I'm also really excited because my hubby got me a holder for my iPad so it mounts actually on my camera stand so I can actually see myself and see your comments and see who's joining without actually having to look off to the side which is pretty darn cool. So I see Laurel has joined me and Denise and Regis and I'm not sure who else. If you are here give me a hello so I can give you a shout out and uh, we're going to get to it. So I'm going to show you how to make one card today using the Awesome Otters set and then I'm going to show you several more that I've made and just kind of give you a little um, explanation of what I did. Okay is that sound good so each day this week I'm going to share one project with you during a live video and then all day long I will be posting other samples um, on my social media okay so you'll want to check out Facebook and my Instagram all right oh here we go we got some more people saying hello we've got Louise and Penny and Joyce thank you for saying hi ladies I'm so glad you joined me all right I'm gonna flip my camera and I'm gonna show you the stamp set and then we're gonna get to doing some stamping hi Deb hope you're keeping warm in frigid Calgary hi Violet how are you up in Wawa I hope you're doing well all right, I'm gonna flip my camera and we are gonna get to some stamping. On the way down, you're gonna see me. There I am. <laughs> That's my new iPad mount. My hubby is awesome. Every time I tell him I need something, he makes it happen. He's a pretty great guy. All right, here we go. Let's make sure that's straight and we are good to go. Looks pretty good. All right. So here we go. Awesome Otters is, again, one of the celebration offerings during um, celebration, which starts January 4th and runs to the 28th of February. Now, this is the celebration brochure. If you haven't yet received your copy, it should be coming to a mailbox near you very soon. Um, Stampin' Up! mailed them out, I think, the second week of December. So you should be getting them very soon. All right. Okay. Hi, Gail from Halton Hills. How are you? All right. Yeah, Deb, isn't it a cool amount? Yeah, hubby is the best. <laughs> he really is. Hi, Susan. Thanks for joining me today. So I'm going to, we're going to make one cute little shaker card project, and then I'm going to show you some more samples. So let's get to it. The project I'm going to make with you today is this one, this fun shaker card, kind of on a shaker card kick. Um, I love any kind of interactive card. Um, I think they're just really fun to make, and they just kind of take what, what we're making to an, a higher level. So this one um, uses this adorable little floating otter. So I'm going to pull out all of my bits here. And to start, we have a piece of Misty Moonlight cardstock, okay? It is cut to five and a quarter by four, and then I've embossed it using the Bark 3D embossing folder. And I really feel like this looks like water. It looks like ripples on water when it's embossed on blue cardstock. I think it's a really cool look. So we have our cardstock. I've embossed it ahead of time. And then we have some of this awesome, 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 Simply Marvelous DSP. Now, this is another celebration freebie. I'm going to be featuring this all by itself later on in my countdown um, but it is so cool so there it's double-sided one side is sort of more modeled marbling and the other one is is has real streaks and I think this just looks amazing for water so that is going to form our background 
So the first thing I'm going to do actually is glue this guy down onto my cardstock. Hi, Tracy. Yes, my hubby is a keeper. I will agree with you on that one, Laurel. Hi, Krista. Hi, Dawn. Thanks for joining me today. All right, so there we go. Um, now, we have, I should mention, I cut the, this piece using the layering diorama dies. You've probably seen me use them before. Um, they are so much fun. They're sort of an, a, an odd shape, but they are just create a really interesting um, shape on the front of your card. So for my frame, anytime you're making a shaker, you need to have a frame with some acetate. So I have used the same size die to cut my acetate sheet and my frame. So I use the same size for the outside. For the inner um, one, I actually went two sizes smaller. So I had a nice wide frame to be able to put my um, foam adhesive to, to create my shaker, okay? Now, I did wanna mention where this acetate came from. So we carry window sheets in the catalog. They're wonderful. But this is my little re reduce, reuse, recycle tip for you for today. So when you get um, our photopolymer stamp sets now, they are designed to actually adhere your stamps to the inside of the case, right? So the idea is you're going to peel all of your stamps off the backing and stick them to the case, and then you can kind of get rid of these pieces. Well, one side is quite flimsy. That side, I don't know, I guess you could use it for a window sheet, but it's quite thin. But this back piece that the stamps are actually stuck on is quite heavy and work beautifully as a window sheet. Now you're gonna need to clean it. Um, I'm not sure if it shows on the camera, but you can kind of see the outline of the stamp. There's a little bit of an oily residue from the photopolymer. So all I do is I wipe down both sides with a little bit of hand sanitizer, and then I have perfectly good acetate to use for my shaker cards, okay? So don't throw those pieces out <laughs> when you get your photopolymer stamps. That's my little environmentally, environmentally friendly crafting tip for you for today. Hi Flo, thanks so much for joining me. Hi Jen, hi Charlene. All right, so what I'm going to do is glue my um, balmy blue frame to my uh, window sheet here. Now, I've actually got adhesive sheets on the back of my frame. I just happened to have some balmy blue cardstock that had adhesive sheet on it already. So you can totally glue this with some liquid glue. You don't have to use adhesive sheets. Um, this just happened to have some on. So I thought, why not make our life easier? So we're just gonna glue that frame onto our window sheet. Okay, so now we have our little window for our shaker. Okay, the next step is to take some of our foam adhesive strips. Now these are, <laughs> honestly, these were game changing when they came out. Um, for making shaker cards. It used to be with shaker cards, we used to have to use, some of you may remember this, the edges of our dimensional sheets. We would save them to create frames for our shaker cards. Well, no more. We now have these awesome adhesive strips. And so you just peel them off and we're just going to create a pocket. So I'm just gonna kind of follow along my frame here. I would wanna make sure that I'm not too close to the edge because I don't want it to be visible, right? We wanna make sure that it's hidden. So we're just gonna kinda come around our frame, all right? And then I've got a piece of another one here. When you have to connect, you wanna make sure that your pieces are butting right up against each other, okay? Because we don't want our shaker pieces, in this case our sequins, to be falling out. So I'm gonna trim this off. And again, make sure my pieces are right up against, can you see how nice and tight the joints are there? Um, that's what you want. You don't want pieces falling out. All right, so when we glue this on, I'm just gonna flip it over for a minute and show you. This is going to get glued right over top of our background piece to create our shaker, okay? So what we're going to do now is take a little bit of these awesome Shimmer and Shine sequins. Now these are in the new mini. Um, you can use any sequins, honestly. These are the ones that are coming out uh, January 4th when the mini goes live. So I'm just gonna put some of these little guys in here and get my, put my lid back on so I don't make a mess. And we're gonna get rid of our backings. Peel all these guys off. And now this is the only part you really wanna take your time with because you wanna make sure that you line your um, window up over top of your DSP piece so that you get a nice seal. 
All right, and there is a shaker. How easy was that? Isn't that just so fun? I love, love making shaker cards. All right, now let's glue this guy onto our card base. So we have a misty, oh, thanks Flo. Yeah, those, the, these little scoops are actually from the dollar store. They're actually for beads. And I got them years ago. And uh, every time I do a video and I, and I use them, people ask me where I got them. So <laughs> that's where I got them. I don't know that they're still available, but uh, they were really fun. Um, all right, so this is a piece of Misty Moonlight cardstock. It's five and a half by eight and a half, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. So we're gonna fold that in half along our score line. And we're going to go ahead and glue our panel onto the front. Now, people always ask me why I layer tone on tone. Why would I not just emboss the card front and just glue this right on? You totally can do that, okay? Um, this is just a personal preference of mine. I like the inside of my cards to be clean. I don't want to see the emboss pattern on the inside. That's just my own preference. Um, you could absolutely emboss your card front and skip this extra panel, okay? That's just me being, I don't know, me being fussy, I guess. So we're gonna add a little bit of seal to our embossed panel. And then we're gonna go ahead and glue that onto our card base, just like that. Okay, super simple. Now we're gonna stamp and do some coloring. So I have a little scrap of white cardstock and my adorable little otter stamp here. Yeah, I'm glad I'm not the only one, Louise. <laughs> Hi, Bonnie. How are you? Thanks for popping by. So we're going to ink up our adorable little otter here. I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black to stamp my otter. It works very well with our stamp and blend, which is what I'm going to use to color him. So to color this guy, I am going to use my um, light gray granite stamp and blends for his the main part of his body. I'm not going to do any shading on this one, just in the interest of time. You certainly could add shading and shadow uh, by bringing in the dark um, of the same color. But in the interest of time, and because you guys don't want to watch me color for half an hour, <laughs> um, I'm not going to add any shading on this guy. But these images are so, so sweet and fun to color. I love them. I've been having lots of fun playing with different color combinations too for their fur. Um, I really like the gray granite because it's kind of a brown gray, which is actually quite close to the color of Otter's fur. Uh, my parents live on a lake up north in Northern Ontario, and they have a family of otters that um, live just off their property, like just off the, the edge of their property in the lake. And so when we go up there in the summer, in the evenings, the otter family comes out and we get to watch them playing. They're so much fun. They go digging for clams in the lake and smash them on the rocks to open them up and eat them. They're just, they're so cute. So this is kind of a fun set for me because it brings back happy summertime memories. Certainly summer feels very far away right now here in Canada and Southern Ontario. I know parts of those of you that are out west are in the deep freeze. We are, have not been nearly that cold yet this winter, knock on wood. <laughs> I'm just fine with it not getting that cold. Um, but I feel for those of you that are out west. <laughs> All right. Um, for his belly, I'm going to use some light crumb cake. Okay. And again, because the um, gray granite has a fair bit of brown in it, the crumb cake works quite well as um, a complementary shade. So I'm just gonna color his little belly here. We'll go around our little fishy. And we'll get him all colored in. I'm gonna miss that little bit there. The thing I think I love most about Stampin' Blends is the way the color just glides on. They're so smooth. All right, so there is his adorable little belly. And then I'm going to use my light black, if there is such a thing, in Stampin' Up! Land there is, to um, just add a little bit of color to his nose. I just want it to be a little bit darker. Okay, oh, let's just make sure we get all of them. There we go. And then for my fish, I am going to do his bot, the fish's body in dark balmy blue. And the only reason I'm using balmy blue is because that is the light shade of blue that I used on my card front. So I just wanted to be consistent. You could certainly do a different color for the fish, but 
I just wanted to keep it fairly consistent on this one. And then I'm going to use the light balmy blue for the face of the fish. Really, really light shade. There we go. Isn't it cute? Oh, love them. All right. Hi, Brenda. Thanks for joining me. Hi, Martine. All right. So we are going to fussy cut this little guy out. Now, I know many of you are probably wondering, are they going to come out with dyes for these guys? I would love it if they did. I have no inside information as to whether or not they are. <laughs> I would love it if Stampin' Up! did. Um, honestly, these guys are not hard to fussy cut. They're pretty, pretty simple. Just have to kind of work around the ears. Um, but they are not hard to cut out at all. So when you're fussy cutting again, you want to make sure you're moving your paper rather than your scissors. Okay. And you want to make sure you have a good pair of scissors. Our paper snips are the best for cut fussy cutting because they have a very fine blade and they're very, very sharp. And the other thing that I love is that they're sharp right to the tip. Um, sometimes you need to really nip into tight corners and having a nice sharp blade right to the tip is really helpful. All right, so let's just finish this guy off. Get all the way around his tail here. Now you'll also notice that every once in a while I'm cutting off larger chunks. Um, that's just to make it easier to maneuver, getting rid of those large pieces. Okay, so there's my cute little otter. So he is going to get glued on in my little pool here. He's going to be floating on my shaker. So we're just going to add a little bit of tape. You could certainly use liquid glue if you prefer. Um, I'm just going to add a little bit of tape here and stick him right onto my acetate. There he is. Isn't he sweet? Oh, love him. All right, and then I have a cute little label. This is die cut using the Hippo and Friends dies. Um, the Hippo and Friends dies are easily overlooked. Um, they have awesome label shapes in them. Um, yes, there are dies to coordinate with the stamp set, but um, I love the label shapes. In fact, I don't even think I've used the other dies. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna stamp my sentiment that says you are utterly awesome, which is the cutest little pun. Um, in Misty Moonlight, and I'm going to move this down a little closer to me just so I can hopefully get it straight and centered. It's very hard to do that when you are stamping off not centered. And there we go. All right. And then this is just going to tuck in on the corner of my um, little pool here. So I'm going to put a bit of tape behind where it overlaps and then a little mini dimensional down in the opposite corner. So we're going to put one there. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to use a mini dimensional. I'm actually going to use a little bit of these foam strips, mainly because these are a little bit thicker than dimensionals. And this is popped up with foam strips, right? So if I want this to lie flat, I need to use something that's the same depth. So that's just another little tip when you're using these um, foam strips, just to help you get your pieces to lie nice and flat. All right, so let's pop this guy on right about there. Oh, that's a bit crooked. Let's see if we can straighten that out. There we go. So cute. All right, the last little touch is a little bow. Actually, second last touch um, is a little bow. This is um, some Baker's Twine. It's white, misty moonlight, and silver, which works perfectly with my sequins and my shaker. And this is from the Flowers for Every Season ribbon combo pack. It's in the annual catalog. Um, easily overlooked. Again, there's so many things in the annual catalog that we kind of forget about because we're so um, starry-eyed by all the new products and there's so many awesome products in the annual that get overlooked. So we are going to tuck our little bow in actually underneath the corner of our label. So to do that, I'm going to take a glue dot and I'm going to roll it into a little glue booger here. Whoopsie. And I'm going to press it onto my knot here. And then I'm going to use my take your pick and tuck it in underneath my label here. Whoop, don't stick yet. There we go. Just going to tuck that guy in there. We'll maybe trim this off a little bit so it's not quite so long. There we go. And then the last little touch on this, I added a couple of little star sequins here around the sentiment. I'm going to bring back my sequins again. And for this, I'm actually going to use the blue goo end of my um, take your pick. This, this end is awesome for picking up little 
teeny bits. So I'm going to grab my sequence here and I'm going to start by putting a little dab of fine tip glue where, whoops, I almost had a mess. Let's open the top part of our fine tip. That's better. We're going to put a little dab of this fine tip glue where I want my sequence to go. So one there, one over here, and one kind of down here. Okay. And then we are going to, as soon as I get the lid back on this, we're going to grab a couple of stars and look at that. There's three of them stuck to the lid of my sequin container right here. So we're going to pop this guy on and I like to use the tip of my take your pick just to help get that sequin unstuck from my blue goo and pressed into place. Whoopsie. On my card. So there's that guy and our last one right there. Okay. So do not try to do, play sequins with your fingertips. <laughs> Or your fingernails um, they are staticky and they stick and you'll just end up frustrated so using this thing is your best bet when you are using these little um, sequins okay so there is our finished project now on the inside I added another basic white paint well, stamped another of those adorable otters and then I used a sentiment actually from this stamp set this is the special moment stamp set which is another celebration freebie all sentiments, fantastic. Now this is a level two set, so it is free with a $120 order during celebration. Totally worth it, highly recommend it. So I've used that sentiment on the inside. Isn't he cute? Love him. All right, now let me show you a couple of other ideas with this set. So this guy is one that I posted earlier today. Um, again, uses more of that awesome Simply Marvelous paper. And on this one, I stamped my otter directly on the paper, but then I also stamped him on white, colored, and then fussy cut him out, and then paper pieced him into place. So he's kind of peeking his head up from uh, below the water. The other thing I wanted to point out is I used some of my fine tip glue to add a little bit of highlighting to the waves on the water here. Um, this works almost like crystal effects in that it dries very hard and shiny. So you can get a really cool sort of glossy f effect. And then I added a couple of extra little um, embellishments, drop shaped embellishments there. Okay, now I should also mention this embossing folder is another new one that is coming. And it's called Spatters and Stripes. Um, and it is awesome and it's perfect for water splashes, right? For the otter. So that was um, that adorable one. Now this one is another one that I posted earlier today. Fun, fun birthday card, uses more Celebration DSP. This is uh, Sunshine and Rainbows, which again, I'm gonna be featuring later on this week. Fun little birthday card. This one I haven't posted yet. It will be coming up later this evening, but just another cute card using that same stamp that we used on our project. Gave him an orange fish this time. Another sentiment from the Special Moment stamp set. Okay, there's another one. And then finally, I couldn't resist using my Picture This Dies to create a, another cute little shaker card. So I only made shaker pockets on the three smaller circles, and then the larger ones are where I used my, my stamps. So, so fun, so cute. Hope you like those ideas. And that's it, that's for me. That's it for the Awesome Otters this week. I am going to be featuring a new stamp set tomorrow from the Celebration Mini, so make sure you come back. Same time, same place, 5 p.m., um, right here on my Facebook business page. All right, everybody, thanks so much for joining me this week. I hope you enjoyed, not this week, this evening, this afternoon, <laughs> and I will see you tomorrow for day two of my Countdown to Celebration. Bye for now.